All right. We are going to fill out two documents today. One is plot development and one is a slime. If we run out of time, we will do the slime tomorrow before we start anti-misery, okay? Anti-misery is only like two pages long, so it's only, only gonna take us about 15 minutes to read. So, when you're doing a plot and development, kids, I've got everything in here that you should have. Does yours have this little box that says inciting incident? Yes. yes. Okay, so here's the way I like to do this. First of all, let's get the, your name up here. We've got the monkey's paw, right? Now you're gonna have to probably write a little more than me because notice I won't be able to fit it. So put the monkey's paw by W.W. Jacobs. Yeah. Okay, here's what I like to do. I like to determine this. I like to look at this. I like to determine this. Before I work on these boxes here and here, I like to take care of the big things, right? And we've already talked about some of this. So let's start up here for a second. Who's telling the story? W. The narrator. The narrator. So it is what? Third person. I hear one person. Third person. Is it? Limited, objective, or omniscient. Remember, do we know anybody's feelings except in quotes? No. no. Omniscient. Yes. Do we hear that somebody is thinking something or feeling something at any point? Look back in your text. for me you can't just guess. Brooke, what are you seeing? How do we know some of his feelings? Give me an example. Give me a page, a column. and it was telling how he felt. Do we know anyone else's feelings? So we know we know Mr. White's feelings. Anybody else? Marley, what page? Um, on 97 and I was just gonna use um, the old lady started, is anything the matter? She breathed, or she asked breathlessly, which proves that she's feeling, um, she's feeling hurt and upset um so but that's the way she asked it and i could say that so we need something else that shows we know her feeling oh right here um 98 um as her fear of the awful confirmation of her fears and the other's averted face um, she was fearful that her okay. son died. So she, we had the thoughts and feelings of at least how many? Two. Two. So what is it? Limit. No, omniscient. Omniscient. I'll write this out for you. It is omniscient. Okay, what's the setting? Village. I can't hear you. The middle of nowhere. Okay. But it's where specifically? Where are they? At home. Okay, it's at the White's home, right? It's in the middle of nowhere. We know it's out, if you want to put down there, it's at night, it's cold out. They live on kind of a funky area where there's only the two homes. What 
what's the situation or the climate at the beginning of the story, Landon? Cold and wet. Well, when you think climate, I don't want you to think about weather. I want you to think about the people. What are they doing? In the very beginning of the story, Landon. Um, the people are the people are sitting there like doing their thing peacefully, like the like the white like Mr. White and and um Herbert. Well, yeah, Herbert are playing chess while Mrs. White is knitting. Okay. So they're peacefully enjoying themselves at home. Can we say that? All right, put that down. They're peacefully enjoying themselves at home. By the way, kids, this has to be all filled out. I'm collecting it, and you will be graded. The other day when I wasn't here and you had to find the examples of symbolism, I'm not sure what some of you were doing. What about characters? Who do we see right in the beginning? Liam. Mrs. White, Mr. White, and Herbert. Mr. and Mrs. White. And Herbert, right? So I'm going to jump up here because I don't like to do this like in this order. Because if we jump here, we're missing something. What's the conflict? What is the conflict? Addie? Um, the conflict is that the monkey's all kind of everyone. Okay, so we could put here the three wishes, right? And um, not really so much there because that happens later, but here they're like not sure what to do. When you say that, it's a yeah. conflict, like what do we do, what do we do? So I'm going to say what to do. What is the inciting incident, kids? What brings on this conflict? Elizabeth? Um, uh, Sergeant Major Morris brings in the monkey thing. Sergeant Major Morris gives the whites gives them the monkey's paw. He would have never done that. None of these things would have happened, right? Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Okay, that's your inciting incident. That's the thing that causes the conflict. If he had never shown up and never gave them this monkey's paw, they would have never had to worry about what to wish for, right? So who is the protagonist in this story? Who's the good guy that you're thinking about, or good guys? What do you think, Emma? Like, uh, I would say Mr. and Mrs. White. Yeah, I would too. I would say Mr. and Mrs. White. Now what's, who or what is the antagonist? And be very careful. Does the antagonist have to be a person? No. Does it have to be a thing? No. It could. What could it be? What do you think, Kylie? Fate. Fate? That's interesting. I wasn't going there, but that's a good one. Anybody else have an idea? Clinton? What? Well, the monkey's paw itself, I don't think, is the problem, as long as they don't do anything with it, right? Elena? Huh? Three. That's what I was going to say. I like yours too, though, Kylie. If you want to work with that, you can. Okay. So now look where we're started. Right? Yeah. What did we decide the other day was the climax of this story? When? Kaylin. When someone's knocking on the door. Or when um, she opens the door. Mrs. White opens the door and nothing's there. 
opens the door and there's nothing. Right? So here's why it is important, kids, that you understand a plot development. Between the time the paw is given to the whites and here, that stuff goes here. There's more than three things that happen, right? But you cannot have them getting the paw here because it's already here. And you cannot have them opening the door here because it's already here. Same thing over here. You can't have them opening the door here. It's here. Then nothing is allowed to overlap. Everything's separate. Do we understand that? Mm -hmm. All right, so let me, you tell me what's the first major thing that happens. First of all, what do they do? They wish for what? Two hundred pounds. 200 pounds. That's a symbol for pound, believe it or not. You can fit in more than that so it makes sense, kids. I can't. What's the next thing that happens? There's kind of like two things wrapped in one, Elizabeth. Um, they figured out, they figured out Herbert dies and gets the money. Herbert dies. And they get the cash, right? They get the money. He gives them a check. He gives them a check. So it's, it's money. What's the third thing that happens? Now we kind of run out of spots already because we're here to where they open the door. What happens right here, Addie? Um, the whites wish for Herbert to. The what? The whites wish for Herbert to. The whites wish for Herbert. Now, could you add boxes here, kids, and have a couple more events if you needed to? Yeah. Yeah, so I always just focus on three, but the whites wish for Herbert to come back. that obviously while this is white it's frantically trying to get the door open because there's a knock right we can even put that here if you want that there's a knock but no one's there we don't know what mr. white wished for do we no. all we know is that somebody's knocking on the door and somehow he is able to grasp that monkey's paw in the last minute and make a wish and for whatever reason whatever was knocking on the door whether it was herbert or something else is gone right all right so now let's look at the very very end of the book for the very very end of the story it's all going to be in the last page. That's to be in the last paragraph, right? The bolt, she's trying, and at the same time she's creaking the door open, he finds that monkey's paw, and she opens the door to nothing. So, What does she do? It says what she does. What does she do, Marley? Um, she run. She ran to the door when she heard. That's that already happened. happened. Okay. Can't overlap. What does she okay, do after well, she opens the door? She tried to get the bolt unlocked, but she's too short. She, she already got that, honey. She already opened the door. Look at that last paragraph. Um. The cold wind the does what? Stop. Um, and the cold wind, the cold wind, um, rushed up the staircase. Okay, so the cold wind rushes in.
What does Mrs. White do? She wails. What does that mean? Screams. Mrs. White screams out. What does Mr. White do? What does he do? In a cold, long, loud wail of disappointment and misery from his wife gave him courage to run down to her side and then to the gate beyond. So Mr. White does what? Looks for the guy. But he comes to whose aid, kids? It's his wife. She's screaming. She's distraught. And Mr. White comes to Mrs. White, right? And what is the resolution? In the end, what's there, kids? Nothing. No sun. Nothing, right? Yeah. Right? So Mr. and Mrs. White are what? Disappointed. Well, it doesn't say that, but they're alone without their son, right? Can't you just say that? Herbert doesn't show up. They are alone without their son. Even the short stories are sad. So look at all that we did. Make sure your name's at the top because I am going to collect it. Look at all that we did. Now I'm glad Marley said the things she said, kids. Why? What did she do? What did she do right here? Liam. She listed the events that led up to the climax happening. She listed the events that really happened like right here, didn't she? Yeah. Here's where the whites wish for Herbert to come back. And then there's the knock on the door. And then Mrs. White is, oh my gosh, help me, help me. She's trying to get that chair over there. She's getting the bowl. Everything's happening. And then she opens the door to nothing. You can't talk about that here. And you, she did not, Marley did not make an uncommon mistake. That is super common. You cannot allow these things to overlap. That's why I try to figure out what this is first. Right? Yeah. Yes. Um, I think outside the door was a doctor telling them that like they revived their son or something. Oh. <laughs> well, you don't know. Because they said everything would happen naturally. All right, so what's the theme of the story? And before you give me a theme, remember that a theme is what we call universal. It is one sentence. It is not story specific, so you cannot talk about the monkey's paw. You cannot talk about their dead son. You cannot talk about the whites. You cannot talk about work accidents. What is the one thing you can talk about in your theme, Nev? It's the message, the message. Stick with message because if we say moral, that means they want you to learn a lesson. It's not necessarily that. But what can you come up with for a theme for me, Nev? Um, be careful what you wish for. Oh, I love it, except guess what one of the rules is about theme? Yeah. You can't do cliche. And cliche is an overused phrase. So can we take what Nev said, because that's good, and turn it into something that is different than what we're used to hearing? You should make sure, all, make, learn about all the consequences before wishing for something. Okay. What do you got, Brooke? Never mess with fate. Never mess with fate. That wouldn't be bad, except have we even used that word here? Yeah, we got to be careful, but I'm not saying you can't. Marley? Um, I feel that there are two, actually. One of them 
being that, and then the second one, I was gonna say, don't let greed control you, because of how they okay. wish for the money and all of that. And let me give you one. one more rule about themes. They cannot be cliche. They cannot be commands. So you can't tell me something to do. So take you what mind. take what Nev said. Be careful what you wish for, and let's turn it into a generic statement. Let's stick to wishing, okay? Oh, I was gonna say something not related to wishing. I said, say, you um, rule with your life, and those who mess with it who do so to sorrow. The event was a war. I actually don't mind that one. It's a little long, but I want to. I just want to stick with wishes. I want to keep it simple. What are you thinking, Village? Know the consequences of your actions. Can somebody give me um, a theme that has the word wish or wishing or wishes in it? That's not a command. What are you thinking, Kaylin? Okay, but that's a command. Um, you should be conscientious, conscientious of the, no, like, you know how you think of the effects of uh, We got Willie. Oh, wishing can cause serious consequences. Oh, there we go. Wishing, I'm going to tell you a key word he used. Now, I wasn't looking exactly for that. I was going to come up with something a little different, but it's similar. So wishing can have serious, I'm not sure if that's exactly what you said, Willie, but consequences, right? I am also going to put over here, well, we'll leave it just like that. So write your theme in. Here's the key on here, kids, can have. It doesn't say wishing does have, does it? Because sometimes you could wish for something and it could come true and it could be all good, right? But can it have serious consequences? Yes, sir, Bob. All right, you are not leaving my room until this is copied down, and you have a little more detail than me, so please don't just put Herbert Dye's arrow dollar signs. I can't fit that in. What it should say is Herbert dies, and the whites get their 200 pounds. So please write that out so that you know what it means, because tomorrow we're going to do the slide. So for those of you at home, am I still being recorded? Yes. Yes. For those of you at home, we did not get to the slime today. We're going to do that tomorrow before we start anti-mystery. Okay? Oh, All right. Um.